All right, good evening. Let's see if we can get this done without um, having too much of a aggravating time. Um, today, I'm going to try and just give you a brief on the Sunday school lesson as um, because of the power outage and lack of internet services. I'm going to still <clears throat> just give you a little bit of the outline and the scriptures that today's lesson is. And it is about, and the lesson is Acts 2.38. That's the topic of the lesson. Acts 2.38. <laughs> oh, boy. Us Pentecostals would go crazy over that. Oh, oh, oh Acts 2.38. But then when you think about it, you also think about the fact that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, when he went away, he gave them the charge in um, Matthew about the baptism because this is where a lot of folks get all bent out of shape about baptism. But um, we're going to see what the lesson is about. We're going to read the scriptures and let the scriptures speak for itself, okay? The focus verse is Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 39. <clears throat> now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Our lesson text comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 and 14 through 39. The truth about God is that the gospel of Jesus opens the door to salvation. That's, that's the point right there. Salvation. And as you will see when it said um, in, in the scripture there, in verse 38, it says, be, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins. Um, when I look at verse 38 here, and I'm looking, I, I got my um, New King James Bible. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All right? So this is the reasoning behind the baptism in Jesus' name, for the remission of your sins. Now, somebody's going to want to, I'm going to go right here to uh, Matthew chapter 20, I think it's 28, hold on, because I don't want nobody to say, well, Jesus said, and I'm going to say you're absolutely correct. In Matthew 28, and uh, he's here with the 11 disciples, okay? Verse 16, Matthew 28, verse 16. It says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Why? Because this is the time where Jesus's body had been placed in the tomb, supposedly his dead body. And now, after um, he has been risen from the dead, all right, after he has visited certain people, okay, especially the guys on the Emmaus Road, <laughs> they, they had a time. But he says here in verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, listen to this, all power, excuse me, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Remember, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said, is it not? Okay. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So 
This is where doctrinal differences come into play. Um, um, I remember one person said, well, I'm going to do what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how, did, how come Peter changed what Jesus said? All right. And then you need a teaching into Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you're interested in that, you can message me. Send me a message in Messenger on Facebook and um, even on TikTok. And say, Robin, I would like to do a Zoom Bible study with you concerning the name Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Baptism, and the name Jesus Christ, Baptism. And we can do that. We can do that. All right, let's go on with the rest of the lesson here. Now, then it says, for my life, the truth of my life, I will obey the plan of salvation outlined in Acts 2.38. All right, so let's get into the reading of the Word of God. That's the most important thing before I lose light, okay, and battery. So y'all uh, forgive me for not doing a full Bible study uh, Sunday school lesson, but let's go ahead on and do what God has given us to do. The first four verses of Acts chapter 2, again, I am reading from the New King James Version. Ain't that correct? Let's see here. Yes, New King James Version. And it says this, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, sorry, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. Mm. This isn't something that they scratched the scalp and said, oh, let's do this. Mm -mm. This is what the Lord gave them to do. Now, let's go on to verse 14 and read the rest of the lesson here. OK, verse 14. Let's find it here. Okay, but Peter standing up with the 11, all right, okay, about to lose light, y'all, so forgive me, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, okay, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. All right. Hmm. Yeah, there's so much. There's so many lessons that can be taken from here. But I, I, Robin is gonna go on just with Acts two thirty eight because that's what the Sunday school lesson is for September twenty nine. Okay, <clears throat> and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Behold, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, there's going to be visual changes in our atmosphere. Mm. And it shall come to pass that whoso, whoever, excuse me, calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of people saying, just call on the name of the Lord and you're saved. There's a lot of repentance that need to go on while you call him. All right. And then, yes, I said that. Mm -hmm. It says, men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. See, it was already the foreknowledge of God. Mm-hmm says, you have taken by lawless hands. See, 
You didn't even do it according to the law of the land. All right? You know, just go on. Have crucified and put to death whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, mm -hmm. because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David said, I'm telling you, it's good to know that death does not have power over our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. David said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiceth and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, the place of the dead. You're not going to leave my soul there. Mm -hmm. Nothing there. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Twofold speaking about the people of God as well as Jesus Christ himself. But he may have died. That body may have died. But my God, it rose again. The same body rose again with all power, all power in heaven and in earth. Remember Matthew? Remember what I said in Matthew uh, 28? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can write that down. Okay. And I went to 16 through, I can't remember the exact scriptures. Hold on. Matthew 28, verse 16. Okay. All righty. Let's see if I have it here. Nope. Hold on. Because mm -hmm. I want you to remember this. Matthew 28. All right. Yeah. Matthew 28. And I started at verse 16. Right. And I read to verse 20, all right? And when I read it, I read this part right here. All authority from verse 18 has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's what I, see, we want you to make absolutely sure that you are aware of this awesome God that we serve, all right? So yeah, all power even over life and death. Yes. Okay. It says verse 29, back to Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriot David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Okay. Therefore, being a prophet and no, excuse me, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruits of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. All right, let's see here. What verse is that? 30? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, all right. He says, he foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. And this is Jesus. His flesh didn't see corruption and his soul was not left because what happened? The body still may remain intact until this day. Mm -hmm. Life is still yet in that body. Yes. All right. It says this Jesus God has raised up of which we are all witnesses. Verse 33 says this, therefore being exalted, exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself. Now David didn't go up into the heavens, but he says this, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Mm -hmm. till I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 36, he says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. All right, look at here, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Now, when they heard this, all right, this is verse 37. They were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Uh -huh. 
He says here in verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent. This is the most important thing for you to repent of your sins and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. All right. That's the important part right there. Repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You understand? Totally different from Matthew 28, is it not? Mm -hmm. He says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. All right. I went to verse 39. So as you can see, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 is very important, as well as Matthew chapter, um, what did I say it is? Uh, chapter 28, verse 16 to the end, okay? All right, the, uh, the Holy Spirit outpouring. Jesus' followers obeyed his command to tarry in Jerusalem. The Spirit was poured out as Jesus had promised. I will pray for a Holy Spirit outpouring. Mm -hmm. He says, Peter's message, that's right. Peter preached Jesus from the Old Testament. All of that right there in the second chapter of Acts. All right, I will proclaim, oh, excuse me. Peter preached the death, burial, and the resurrection. I will proclaim Jesus and his glorious gospel. How many of us evangelists, how many of us are pastors, apostles, bishops, pastors, teachers? How, much, how many of us are deacons and lay members, mothers and missionaries, all right? How many of us are out here doing what God wants us to do? How many of us are doing that? I will proclaim Jesus and his glorious gospel. Mm -hmm. The right response. The crowd was convicted of sin, especially after Peter rolled it right on down the line. Y'all lawlessly, y'all did this. You didn't have any right to crucify Jesus Christ. You had no right. You didn't even have any um, any evidence. You had to fabricate it. You had to get pay off some liars. You understand? Mm -hmm. oh, the crowd was convicted of sin. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, if you don't heard this, we got to do something. Then he says, Peter commanded them to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Peter promised they would receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is the same. I will obey the plan of salvation outlined in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. So what does Acts chapter 2, verse 38 say? Why is that scripture so important? Again, let us read it from the New King James Version. Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Going back to Matthew chapter 28, because so many people want to fight about this. It's not, you don't have to fight about it. Because remember, what, um, what, what was that verse? Let me go back to that verse. Uh, he said, um, verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made this Jesus, whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. There's just so much to this lesson and I can't get to it because we don't have power right now. And uh, yeah, I might have to do another study on this. This is so good. But he says here, Jesus came. All authority has been given me, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Uh, when I do teach this, I go to the scripture that where Jesus himself says, when you've seen me, he's talking to um, Philip. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. Mm -hmm. So, eh, 
Acts 2.38. So now let's look at a little bit of this, um, a, a little bit of the um, outline here and um, go back to the, to the scriptures that deals with it. Jesus' followers obeyed his command and to tarry in Jerusalem. That is in, I believe, Acts chapter 1. All right, all right. Where, yeah, verse 4 of Acts chapter 1. Jesus said here, after being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, ye have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Mm. Did you hear that? Now we're dealing with, now see, I like to deal with scripture on you because a lot of people, uh, they say a lot of stuff, but let's go to the scripture. Let's see what the scripture said. This is where he commanded them. You wait for the promise of the, of the father. John might have baptized you with water unto repentance, he said. Uh-huh. But he says, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when you go to chapter 2 and you see that these folks are right there in the upper room. Well, that was wonderful. Uh, in the upper room. And they are with one accord. All right. In one place. Now, what's going on here? What, let's go. Let's let's look at that. Let's look at it. The Spirit was poured out in chapter two, where it says here, um, verse two of chapter two of Acts, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now what's going on here? This is the pilgrimage of the Jews. They are here in this place. <clears throat> all right. They're here in this place for a specific reason. So you have, you have here um, Medes and Parthians. You have Elamites, all right, Mesopotamian people, Judean people. You have here Cappadocia, Cappadocia Pontus and Asian people, Phrygia and Pamphylians, Egyptians. Uh, how about the Libyans and Cyrenians, all right? Romans and Jews and proselytes, all right? Look, look, look who else is here? Cretans and Arabs. And all of these nationality of people are there for specifically for one reason, and that was to worship God, right? That was to do their, their duty as Hebrews, right? <laughs> but here in um, verse 11, they said, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. Mm. They must be drunk. Somebody said, oh, this ain't the right time of the day for people to be drinking. See, we Americans and, you know, some other people, we, we nowadays, if we desire to, to partake in alcoholic and or other types of um, mind altering beverages and the like. Um, sure, we can do it any time of the day we want to as long as we got the money to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not good for you to be drunk first thing in the morning. All right? Now, I have been around people and I've worked with people that had the fresh smell of alcohol on their breath. They can't get through the day without having a taste. Oh, but when you get his Holy Spirit within you, you don't need that taste because he comes in and do exactly what those alcoholic beverages, those numb, 
I mean, um, yeah, those mind-numbing um, services, okay, will do for you, so you think. Yeah, because you have to keep doing it over and over and over. When he comes, that's the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, let me go there. John chapter 14 and uh, verse um, 20. Five, which says, the, uh, is that right? 14, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Well, Sister Brooks, now again, you said, Father, mm -hmm. yes, I did. Yes, I said it because I read it in the word of God. I don't take away Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I don't tell you you're going to die and go to hell because you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I ain't going to tell you you're going to die and go to hell being baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. I ain't going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you you're not going to die and go to hell or you are going to die and go to hell if you are baptized or not baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the, I'm not going to tell you that because you make the decision as to the lifestyle you choose to live with or without baptism. You understand? All right. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, just let you know for the remission of your sins and for the receiving of the Holy Ghost, that's the importance. Okay? All right. So, St. John 14 is another lesson. All right? So here, we, we, we are seeing that they obeyed. We see that the Holy Ghost was promised. And now, you know, Jesus already done, done talked to you in chapter one. If you go there in that upper room, you go, you go, tarry, stay right there until the father sends the Holy Ghost. And he already told you that the Holy Ghost is who the Lord, you know, the father, I'll, I'll keep it like the scripture said, will send in his name, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll leave that. Now, Peter's message, what did Peter do? Again, chapter two, he talked to them about the fact that you guys crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. You did it. You didn't, you didn't have a reason to, you just did it. Okay. But he, what he says is that, um, yeah, God raised him up anyway. God still raised up the Lord Jesus, his body, him, himself. And it says here, having loosed the pains of death. It's not possible to hold our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as his body in death. That means that the one who has the keys to Hades is more powerful than the Lord Jesus Christ. No, ma'am, no, sir. Because there's another scripture where where Jesus um, said that I have the keys. Mm -hmm. I got them. You ain't got to worry about that. I got that. I got the keys. Satan has no control over that anymore. All right. He preached that message. He preached it dealing with um, Joel. Joel chapter 2 verses 28 through 32. All right. Went into Psalms as well. And, and, and so he was dealing with the Lord, the master, the Messiah, the coming one, the one who will come. Even if, if, if we look back at, uh, is it Isaiah 63? Hold on. Hold on. Let me go here. Hold on. Let me. Okay. What was it? 50. God, every day. No. 53. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 53. Yes. When you get to Isaiah chapter 53, you will say, you will see who's believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed for he, all right, shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form, no comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs. Who, who can we go to other than the Lord, right? And he carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Man, you know, how can God allow this to happen to somebody that's to be the savior? But look at this next one. But he was wounded for our transgressions. We the ones that transgressed. He didn't. It says, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Now, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so write in your book, Isaiah um, 53. Okay? All right. And you can go in and um, read that. So after, after Peter had spoke the words that he spoke, the crowd was convicted. Yes, they were. They were convicted of the sin. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, that's where he came with the answer. You want what Jesus Christ has for you? Do this. Now, let's go to verse 38. You want what he has for you? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, so your sins can be remitted, so that they can be pardoned. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, then you will receive the gift. See, it's a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift. You don't have to work for it. All you have to do is repent of your sins in here, in here, and out of here, desiring his Holy Spirit within you so that you can be filled with his Holy Spirit so that he can cleanse you on a day-by-day -day basis as he reminds you, that's not what you should be doing, Robin. That's not what you should be saying, Robin. That's not how you should be acting, Robin. Then he'll I'll give you a scripture and it blesses your soul and you'll be like, oh man, or give you the words of a song. Yeah. So as I said, um, because I'm losing power and also, yeah, I'm losing that. Um, we're going to leave the Sunday school lesson like that. And who knows, the Lord might say, Robin, when you get power later on in the week, you might need to teach this thing uh, fully. You, because I didn't go into the lesson. It'll take us a while to, you know how I love to teach that. I like to get into it and give you different scriptures. So this is your missionary, Sister Robin Brooks. Peace be unto you. God bless. Take care.